Hello and welcome to Talking Dogs on a Monday. And of course, we are talking all things Conan Ali Kirby Memorial as the uh, well, hugely valuable competition came to a wonderful conclusion at Limerick on Friday night. Firstly, uh, I want to welcome my special guest, as always, the Exile Dub is with us from his Yaw base. And Declan O'Donoghue, uh, a hive of information, was at Shelburne Park on Saturday night, but I'm sure he was tuned in to Limerick on Friday. And of course, look back at the action from Waterford also on Saturday night. We have a packed show for you to, uh, this evening, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy our chat. Gentlemen, you're very welcome indeed. Tommy, I'll start with yourself. A uh, great weekend of Greyhound Sport, and great to hear that there was big crowds everywhere. Shelburne Park was packed. Limerick was absolutely jammed to the rafters. Good signs. Great signs, great signs, and the funny, the funniest thing is, obviously, Curry on Saturday night too, and there was a good crowd there. There was a there was a charity meeting on as well, uh, or a benefit meeting. Sorry, um, yeah, and and you know what, the, the people in Watford were, were were lucky because they were treated to two semi finals that were what I would call proper greyhound races. Yeah, I mean, there was nobody six clear coming out of the second bend and all over. These were competitive, right? You know, right the way through. The brilliant racing, brilliant racing the, the whole way through. And I think we saw something a bit special too in the uh, in the final of the Kirby on, on Friday night. Yeah, uh, Declan, the you know obviously big crowds mean you know big good turnover and you know lots of lots of things happening. Sure. There was a yeah. the queue the queue for face painting at Shelburne Park on Saturday night was as long as it was for a toast. It was, it was, yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously we've Masons and everything else going on at the moment. <clears throat> and it does add balls, it, it does add, as you know, brings new and them come back. Some of them certainly enjoy themselves. I was telling people who were there for the first time on Saturday and they really, really, you know, so it, uh, new people are always welcome and, 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 and to, the more the better. Yeah, the more the better. Well, let's get into it. Let's get into the action itself. Shem, obviously, we will be talking about Shelburne Park and Waterford a little bit later on, but the feature action of the weekend was most certainly the final of the Con and Annie Kirby Memorial. Uh, Tommy, it was the 10th running. It was the 10th year, 10th running. It should have been the 11th running, of course. We had a, we had one missed year for COVID, but you know that's a, a thing of distant memory at this stage. We spoke about the final at length last week, and we had the road show on Tuesday night. We both sided with Clam Brian Treaty. Eventually, we thought that the price was just too big, and little did we know he'd be still the same price at the off. I thought, honestly, I thought he could be seven to four at the off, and he wasn't. He was a, still a, a relatively big price. And as it was, anybody that took the odds about him, well, off the second bend, they were they were pleasantly pleased. But I think this is a proper greyhound. Um, you know what he did to top class greyhounds into the opening corner after a moderate enough start was pretty spectacular and the way he stretched away down the back straight yes there was traffic behind and he was sort of left clear but i just really think i really think this dog could be anything going forward a few, a few things about the find that are interesting one was the fact that Hope beach went off went off favor which i couldn't have from the draw um um, before we get to the winner daytime hugo was was uh, confirmed that he's going to be able to break to a greater degree than he had been doing previously. He's done, he's going to compete to the bend in future races. Scaglietti was 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 uh, further proof of how good a trainer that Packet Foy is getting him out of traps and getting him to the bend. He he like he couldn't have got that dog to finish an inch closer because because yes, if he had got a clean run, he would have been closer, but he couldn't get him to finish an inch closer because the best you can do with a greyhound in a final like that is get him out of traps. And he got him out better than he had come out any night, and it was just the sheer raw ability of Clan Brian Treaty to win the race. What was beautiful about the performance was the maturity he showed. Yes, he tended to go right. He gave Hovex Tommy a little bit of a rub, as I think I, I called it in the examiner today, a little bit of a rub is all it was, and then straightened up. And then there was a very narrow gap, very narrow gap at the first bend where he had to go through, and he drove through. And you know, the funny thing was, he didn't really, really horrifically uh, uh, impede Scaglietti at this at the point. He actually kind of he was clean enough. Yes, he kind of tended out a little bit, and you know, that, that's natural. But for if you if you go back and watch it again, I think what people might have missed is is if you look at just look how narrow the gap is at the first bend where he goes for it and absolutely drives through it. God, if you don't love that in a greyhound, we saw that actually. Funnily enough, we saw that with Teresa Mendoza in 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 Tralee. Remember that? Ian? every time there was yeah. this tiny little gap, she drive for it. Didn't didn't matter a damn. Just going straight for it. Real great determination. I think we saw that. That to me was a great maturity in Tom Bryan Treaty's uh, in performance. We spoke to Graham on Tuesday night in Limerick. And he did say, look, he was, you know, and of course you're going to say it and 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 
and, and with his experience, he was going to be right to. But he said, you know what, we're reading a little bit too much into how far, how wide he went in the semi-finals because he's a young dog, entitled, entitled to be improving, entitled to be learning his trade. And you know what, when you look back at it, he went violently right in the semi-finals because there was clear air outside him. There was nothing outside him. So he took the liberty to say, well, if there's nobody going to be out there, I'm going to go out there. And he would have done the same thing again in the semi-final or the final, probably if, if it had been there, but it hadn't. So he actually tracked really cleverly. I thought he was, I thought it was a fabulous performance. And it amazed me. Well, for some reason it says 28 or 5. Actually, that confused no, it is, it is, it is, it is that confirmed. That is 2808. It is 2808 is the time. Okay, that confused me because 2808 came up in the clock in the video and 2805 came up is is, is still up that, on the website. That's due, that's due to be changed today, as far as I know. Okay, okay, no, it's 2808. It's still a phenomenal performance given how the race was run and what he had to do to get to the front. It's a sub-28 second run, effectively. Yeah, Declan, the, the, the scary thing about this dog is in August 21, he's a son of Pastana. What I've seen with the Pastanas, I think they, they are improvers. They're not, they're not dogs that are going to flash in their first three and four starts. They're probably a bit like Pastana himself. They improve, improve, improve. We don't know where the ceiling is with this fellow. It, it seems to be pretty high. I, I think both of you summed it up extremely well, actually. I, I, I love dogs that drive into the bend. Um, no questions asked. He, he does move a bit right. I mean, Sword Rex moves a bit right. Coming out of trap one. You know, I think he's going to be, Tom Brown's going to be seated in the middle from now anyway. So if, if that's so, that won't be. Um, but it's a very good performance. Yeah. Watching the second time, he, he actually broke a bit better than I told you. He didn't break that badly. But um, he certainly powered into the bend. I agree with Pat, the early dog, that, you know, did everything right. You know, another half stride would have, would have probably cut a bad summer race. But I think that the, the winner on the night was the best dog in it. On the best dog in it. Time will tell who'll be the best dog going forward, of course, as we know down the years that it could be dog with <laughs> the best out of the Kirby, but you've got to look the winner. He, he uh, at, at the moment, he's doing everything well. And his determination, pace, power, he, he is everything. And he's getting the good track senses. He's with a top yeah. kennel. You're breaking up a little bit there, Declan, but we Sorry. definitely, we definitely, we, we got what you were saying from start to finish. Um, you know, Tom Brian Treaty, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read you out his record here, just, just briefly. Like this was his eighth start, right? So his first two starts were in Shelburne Park, and, and on both occasions a real eye catcher. But he, he clocked 2904 and 2882 on both occasions, beaten second behind Hawkfield Blue. He did a 236 and a 231, which really mm -hmm. is walking to the opening corner. He then went to Limerick and we're thinking, you know, if you want to improve his starting, you did 152 and you're gone. Maybe he's just going to be one of those dogs that's going to frustrate the hell out of us and not be a starter. Next time out, 139. Does he improve? He's well beaten now. Um, this was in the first round of the of the of the Kirby from trap one, balked at the opening corner. Um, he finished third, beaten eight and a half. And then the next night, um, in the second round of the Kirby, he's uh finishes second, beat two and a half lengths behind Hovex Tommy, of course, who was behind him on Friday night, balked again at the opening corner for 141. You're gone. This dog is just gonna frustrate the living hell out of us. Uh, and, and you know, so he's drawn a little bit further out in the quarterfinals, trap four. And this was the night where I was wondering, going, God like trap seven isn't wide enough for this dog because he came out of four and he took a bump mm. off the dog in five, a couple of bumps. And even into the corner, he continued, continued to edge off. You know, normally when the dog takes those two bumps, he straightens up. He didn't. He just kept going to the outside in that evening. And then, of course, he wins in 28-31 off a of 132. So by some distance, his, his best start. So we get to the quarter for, or the semi-finals in trap one, and it's you know hand and eye stuff. I haven't seen him from trap four the previous time. Bang, one twenty-five, never touched, makes every yard of running twenty-eight fifteen. Yes, out to trap five in the early yards, but wins with any amount in hand and looks a proper greyhound. And then we're all praying that he gets sort of a middle draw in the final. <laughs> Jody Thompson, I believe, was grey when the trap draw was made. He was fearing for the worst. And here we are, a dog who's now had seven starts behind him, who has improved 29.04, 28.82, 29.58, 28.98, 28. 44, and then things start to click. 28.31, 28.15, and then on Saturday, on Friday night, 28.08, just looked absolutely thoroughly professional. But as you both said, showed huge determination, showed huge ability, and just seems to be grasping it, just seems to be getting it. The penny has now dropped. Like, if he ran again there next week from Trap 3, would it be a surprise to either of you if you did a 27.90? Not really, no. No. 
Oh, so, anyway, for sure, yeah. Even better so, one, yeah. so the question is, where to now? <laughs> That's the question. Uh, anyway, getting back to the race itself, he wins by eight and a half lengths and 28 away. Scaglietti, you know, while he did take the bump off Clambrian Treaty, it was actually Gaetan Hugo that did the problems to him. He ran up the back of Scaglietti. And Scaglietti just eases off to try and get around Clambrian Treaty. Scagli or Gaetan Hugo runs into the back of him. The two of them get entangled a couple of times. Hovex Tommy then bumps into Scaglietti off the second bend. While all this is happening, Bogger Lucky skips around the outside of the moves into second spot. He's about five, six down into the back mm. straight behind um, Clambrian Treaty. And he does reasonably well to keep that margin to a similar enough distance into the third bend, from which point Tom Bryan Treaty just eases on. And as I said, eight and a half lengths in behind Tommy. Uh, a very, very select group of greyhounds. Ryho Beach, as you said, was favourite. Neither of us, we spoke about it at length, um, post pints and after pints as well. And uh, we went deep into the night wondering how Ryho Beach could get the run. As it happens, he didn't get the start anyway. Um, We've no doubt he's a, a very much a greyhound for the future. And who knows, he could well be the fastest dog in the final. But I suspect the Clombrine Treaty will be something special going forward. Um, it didn't happen for him. But outside of that, each of the others sort of had a little part to play in the contest. Um, is there anything you want to take out of the race, apart from Clombrine Treaty, of course? Well, I, I, I was impressed with Bogger Lucky. Um, I did make, make, make it quite clear too, and I, I didn't fancy Bogger Lucky. I thought he was underpriced. Um, and I didn't fancy Roy Hope Beach from the draw. Um, Scaglietti hadn't had the form recently, uh, recently hadn't been doing things right enough recently to be a player, even though, in fairness to them, they could do no more. But I thought I loved the way Barger Lucky skipped around Greyhounds. Yes, there was trouble, and he was, he was, he was, he was, he was probably not going to be placed at the first bend unless there was that bit of trouble, right? But he did make some inroads on Clan Bryan Treaty. Did uh, down to the third bend, maybe right? And it might be small, it might be a length, it might be two lengths. But like Clambrian Treaty doing serious sections, having missed the kick in, and I got doing still doing serious sections. Yes, Clambrian Treaty pulled away up the straight. You'd expect that every night against the likes of Bogger Lucky, but Bogger Lucky is not the finished article yet, as, as none of the greyhounds in the final are anyway, as we'd expect. But um, when he starts to get a consistency in his trapping, he's going to be a serious 5 2 5 dog. I just loved, I loved the way he obviously. He obviously eyed the bend well. He obviously is a clever tracker that he's watching. He's watching what's happening around him. He's not just going to drive it into it into, straight on regardless. He's not one of those dogs. He's actually thinking of it. And actually, when, when he went around Greyhounds, he didn't go like three wide. He didn't waste any space. He didn't waste any give away to too much ground the way he did it. He was quite tight to the Greyhounds that were finding a bit of trouble. And uh, I thought that his pace down the back was, was impressive. Had he broken uh, to the very best of his ability, his 126 or 7, um, you know, there's a chance that he might have, he probably would have matched Clan Brown Treaty down to the third bend. From there, you'd expect Clan Brown, Clan Brown Treaty to go on. And um, Ryho Beach is still, his performance the other night, it's just what he has been recently, if you know what I mean. If that's not unfair to the Greyhound, because we, we, we both have it on record that we think he's probably a derby dog, probably a real player. Uh, when when he when he finds that consistency, what the, what was the word you used last week? Being you had There's a very good word. For, I, I said he sort of had confidence issues. Confidence, yeah. confidence. Yeah, when he finds his confidence, that's that, that's exactly it. When he finds his confidence, he's going to be a serious greyhound. Um, I I, I came away thinking Gay Time Hugo would be the real deal too. But the problem I have at the moment, and it's 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 it's, it's not a problem really, but it's it, it, we've got a pile of greyhounds, and I've said it here last week or week before. I asked the question: How many of these greyhounds are going to break twenty eight seconds? You made the point that they're all going to be run over five to fifty, probably, and whatever else. And that's fair enough. But the, the the number of greyhounds from from the Kirby Memorial, not just the final, obviously, that will break the break twenty eight seconds during the year will be huge. I'm 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 thinking five, six, maybe even, we might even pass it to ten because I think we're at that point where I talked about for I've been talking about for about a year and a half. We're at that point where. Breaking 28 seconds is going to be fairly commonplace soon enough. You can go back to a new number of the performances. Clone of Duke one night, uh, he did it. Um, Clan Brian Treaty, with any bit of luck in running the other day, would have done it. And um, we would have got it in the quarterfinals from it's another dog. I, I think for the minute, but I'm just saying there were a number of performances where he said if things had gone right. Things had gone right in the race, and they didn't, and they still won. Still won impress me. I still did sub twenty eight ten. I mean, we've got the problem. Is, the problem I have is is in in terms of thinking of derbies and all that down the line. We've got so many good greyhounds in the, in the moment. I mean, we've got tremendous potential. I mean, insane stuff, and great. 
brilliant, brilliant, but very difficult for, for, for picking their boot at this stage. There was a dog actually, I go, no, I, we can come back to it in a minute. I find that there was a dog that was brought to my attention there uh, last week, and I must, I must actually mention him in, in just in terms of the long term. I don't think he was mentioned here last week when we were speaking, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll add him in a minute. You might have seen him. We'll get to Declan though. Um, second spot went to Bogger Lucky Declan, uh, Liam Peacock. Um, while he's had a He's received a couple of big checks in, in recent times, more so for, for sales of greyhounds like Bogger Hunter and Callaway Pro-Am, who we'll be speaking about a little bit later on. Um, it's some shot in the arm for him to receive a €20,000 check for, for second place here. Like That's the biggest check he's certainly received from you know a racing point of view, from winning a race or or even finishing second in a race in this case. It, it's some twine, um, and it certainly keeps the lights on for... for for a length of time, I know. I know uh, the price of electricity and gas has gone up, but that'll that'll keep you covered for a while. And it's well deserved. And, and names dogs do do tend to keep improving uh, anyway. And I imagine he'd be getting some for, for for this dog as well because he will certainly improve. He would love uh, five fifty. Uh, they're always worth something, I I think, because you generally get the bucks you want, and you know he does so much going. He did well to go around the other dogs. I, I agree with that. First of all, they don't all do that. You know, some to hesitate to pull. He had no hesitation in doing it. He ran a blinder in, in second behind a very exceptional winner. Yeah, we spoke about Clown Ryan Treaty showing great determination on the opening corner. And um, yes, he had to go to a gap on the inside. Bugger Lucky was equally determined on the outside. You know, he he, he ran like he was on, on, on rails. There was a touch of scale electrics about it. Like he saw his opportunity. He was around those dogs as quick as you like, you know, a snap of a fingers and, he, and he's gone around. And I think that would really stand to him. I know really they have, him. I, know, I know they have turned down some, some good offers in the past for him. Mm. Um, and his record remains intact. His now, his record now win uh, reads 11 starts, four wins, four second place finishes and third, uh, third three occasions. So he's yet to finish out of the first three. It's something you love to see uh, a real probably competition greyhound going forward and have no doubt. We'll be talking about Bogger lucky going forward. Um, Scaglietti actually ran a remarkable race to finish. Finished third. Will you consider all the traffic that he encountered? It's down as 2875, of course. We'll add three spots to that. 2878. 2878, after probably losing six or eight lengths in running minimum, is, is a fair achievement, Declan. And we know from Pat Gilfoyle that you know these dogs will will hold their form through the year. He is a dog that has won over 575. He's a versatile tracker. And I, I would suggest that. Yes, they may run in him in a produce stakes and he could well run in that, but he isn't a five to five yard greyhound going forward. We'll see the best of him over 550. And who knows by the end of the year, this could be a, one of those sort of, um, you know, the Yvonne Barry 600 or the Winter Racing Festival 575, 600 yard type greyhound. The longer run to the corner against dogs that aren't going to show the same amount of speed as Clombrine Treaty. And he's a big, big player. Yeah, certainly. He, he, like I should say, although, you know, <laughs> He could have won on Saturday night had things had things gone slightly some a leading count also they all are and and he, he will keep progressing but definitely versatile we, 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 yeah he will but I'd say five fifty I mean he will keep improving and and the way the way he, he you know I think it'd be a serious five fifty dog as well yeah no question about it Tommy anything else to add about the final. Did you say something about him? Did he kind of remind you a bit of uh, Vincenzo? Did you say that? Yeah, a couple that, of that weeks type ago? of greyhound. Yeah, that type of greyhound. Uh, probably Vincenzo might have had off the start. Vincenzo, if the, I, I think he might have just got around the corner, but you know, perhaps that's the only difference. That that sort of half length into the bend. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, well, yeah. Like he, time might tell. He was up against an exceptional greyhound in 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 um, in Clan Bryan Treaty. Um, Tom Ryan Treaty is on a is on an upper curve as you you went to you know you you, you explained the length there, three wins in a row. He hadn't won until the quarterfinals of this competition. He just as I said on Tuesday night when we were talking to the road show, um, I just love this type of progression in the pup. I absolutely love it. If a dog comes out like Ryho Beach came out in the first round in 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 the Juvenile Classic it was unbelievable. Same in the second round, and there's kind of you know they they then he'll miss the kick or something will happen and and it. it it's hard for them. It takes them a little bit longer to kind of to kind of uh, learn from it, and he will. He'll be fine. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to him for the rest of the year. The Clan Brian Treaty was missing the kick and having to learn very quickly, and you know behind greyhounds and all this. And he, clearly, clearly he thinks this isn't for me. I like to be in front. So, but he took it took him probably many races, maybe five is it five races to get his head in front. 
you know, he's learned, he's learned from slow starts, improved, improved, improved. I love that. Absolutely love that sort of progression in the Greyhound because he knows, he knows how to deal with being stuck behind Greyhounds now because he's been doing it for a while and he knows how to lead as well. And he has the great, and he showed that unbelievable determination to go through a narrow gap on, on Saturday, on Friday night. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I just love his progression. I, I don't know what he could do at this stage. He could do if he, if he came out and did 27, 70 some night, I won't, I will, I won't be surprised anyway. Yeah, uh, Jim Jim Murphy and, and Mira Murphy were at the roadshow on Tuesday night, and uh, you know Jim has owned plenty of good greyhounds in the past. He said from the early stages he knew he was pretty good. He had retired from from uh, from, from what he was doing about a year and a half ago, and he said, "Well, maybe I'll train one or two And he had the idea that he might train this fellow, and I think he trialed him. I think it was Tralee he suggested he trialed him. He came out of the trial and went right. I think I'll ring Graham. <laughs> um, it was like that. I don't want the responsibility. Uh, well, fair play. To Jim and and to Mirren, we we didn't get uh, we didn't get the word on on, on how the cut would actually work, uh, but I'm sure Mirren will be trying to get as much out of her father as she possibly can. Um, I'm sure she'll be watching this uh, as will her mother Kay. Uh, both of them from Malta. They had to put back their flights. They were due to be in Malta and they didn't realize it was Kirby Fine night that they were, they were they were clashing with. And yeah, I think they don't mind uh, missing the the original flight to Malta and they can put back their holiday for a week. And uh, the very best of luck to them. It's important for Pastana also. This is his re- first real superstar. Mm. Um, you know, basically is the back end of his first crop. And as I said to you earlier on, what I've seen of them, the, like I, I hear reports that they're 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 pretty flighty as pups. Like they're 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 jumpy and they're they're excitable. But from what I can see, for racing, they improve steadily and greatly. And I think Clombrine Treaty is very much their poster boy at the moment. And um, Pastana has a future as a sire, no question about that. And for Graham Holland, a second Kirby win in a row, obviously what he's achieving is, you know, unbelievable at present. He had just has the most incredible strength and depth. And the kennel of dogs he has at present is is pretty frightening. Um we'll we'll talk about one or two others, but when you consider that, you know, at the start of the competition, this was probably his fifth or sixth string. You know, and, and that's no exaggeration. You know, Clona Duke actually set the track record during the competition. On that occasion, he did a four eleven fifteen ninety one. Um, off a moderate enough start, Clombrine treated it four fourteen and fifteen ninety two. You know, I think that sums up what what we've seen from Clombrine Treaty. His pace into the corner is pretty pretty spectacular but down the back straight he's not exactly stopping either he's he's electric I, and again I, I wouldn't be surprised if this greyhound went on to be a, a potentially as good a Kirby winner as we've ever seen and uh, that's saying and something funny, funny funny what you say about down the back and being electric like that's what makes me think that Bogger Lucky if he could get his he might not be a 550 dog maybe Bogger Lucky maybe he will mature a bit God, if he starts breaking consistently, he's going to be some greyhound. Because okay, he only maybe might might have got a length out of out of the winner. And just on on to my eye, you know, that's all it is. Um, even to do that is is fairly phenomenal, to be quite honest. Yeah, no, no, it was it was a very special performance from a very special dog in a very special um competition a special night also down at Limerick we saw some wonderful racing from start to finish um, it was great to see young Jack Canelli having a couple of winners he's a very young man he's making his way in the game he had two good winners we had a, we had a big shock in the 750 we had a, a good winner in the 600 Law Hill King getting loose and he's clearly a greyhound with lots of ability if he can continue to race like that the uh, the Open 550 went to um, I suppose the Queen of Limerick these days Bob Slay Dream last year's Ledger winner Romeo Magic was badly clipped at the third bend when in front but Bob Slade Dream was right in his heels we were set for a, a thrilling finish there as it was Bob Slade Dream was left in front and she raced on to a pretty comfortable success uh, the Sean O'Connor uh, went to Una Machina who I said was trained by young Jack Canelli 5,000 euro for the winner a good start for 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 her in in terms of like she's only had the 14 starts now she, she's relatively aged she's September 20 but great to see Jack Canelli with a, with a big race success other than that we had a, a good performance by Romeo Hanzo for Graham Holland the sprint was won in tremendous fashion by Flashing Willow check for Sir who we were absolutely adamant wasn't a sprinter absolutely bombed out of traps and led into the opening corner and Flashing Willow had to be at his very best to get around him and after that well Glorious Best won the Goba Stake as expected he was favourite and racing had commenced with a, a fine display by Drumbeg 10. Speaking of young men, owned by young Evan McAuliffe, who uh, I'm not sure is still, I, I don't think he's legally able to drink to celebrate his success, but uh, he had a good winner in Drumbeg 10 away and gone. And he posted 28-21, a hell of a run as well. I think we'll move on from Limerick. Once again, our thanks to JP and Norrie McManus. This is 
you know, really is the jewel in the crown. We've spoken about it at length over the last few weeks, Tommy. It's significance, the, the place it has now in the competition or in the calendar. Declan, there's no question about it. It's here and, and hopefully it's here to stay. It's been it's been quite a revelation, this competition. You hear me, Declan? Tommy, is it? No, Tom, sorry, Declan, I was saying, um, you know, since its arrival, it's had such an impact on the calendar. It, it, it plays such an important part now. It, it is huge. It is huge. And I, as well, and I appreciate what McManus' contribution to horse racing. We couldn't even begin to, we, we need to, you know, but it, this is a wonderful competition. It gets better every year. It just gets better, you know. And last year, one outstanding greyhound, he, he is, and, and, and we will continue to be. And another exciting one, Again. Yeah, you're still breaking up a little bit, Declan. So, so bear with us if we we sort of miss one or two things you're saying there. Um, we'll go on to Shelburne Park, Declan. Big crowd, as we said earlier on. You know, a lot of young people there. Obviously, communion and confirmation season it was face painting galore. Um, it was joyous. I, I was down at the styles. That's where I pick up my card. And I met Jim Kremen from the Racing Post, who, of course, was at the roadshow on Tuesday night. And we stood there for 10 or 15 oh, minutes yeah. chatting. Yeah. And the yeah. young people coming in, you were, you were talking kids from two, three years of age, all the way up to 15, 16 years of age. And the joy on their face when they got to get up close to a greyhound, pat them down, hold the lead. There was one little girl in particular, Jim actually writes about it today in the Monday column as well worth taking a look in the racing post. He said, I, I'm not sure she was five or six years of age and she was very nervous. And the, the mother said this to, to Brendan and to Paul that she's very nervous with dogs. Within two minutes, she was holding the dog in the lead, patting it down. And the smile on her face would have just brightened up the, the darkest of rooms. It, it really is wonderful. It's great to see. And um, long may it continue. I know it happens at so many tracks around the country. Um, you know, Fanula down in Limerick and, and Fiona in, in Waterford. And I'm sure every track does it. Um, it's just a wonderful way to see, a great way to start the evening. And, and there's so many, many children going to dogs now, so many kids there uh, 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 every week. Enjoy. I think they're bringing the parents back. <laughs> so, <laughs> some weeks, you know, which, which, which is good to see. And having those dogs, get, seeing those dogs up, up close and everything, because the publicity we've been getting, uh, you know, publicity we've been getting has been just so unfair all, all the time. And this is the sign. And that's what I say to you. You know, go to someone in your area who has greyhounds, go in, tell them you're coming, obviously, but go in and meet them, get up close to them. It's just incredible. They're, they're fantastic animals. Now, I, I'm... From, Everyone's walking greyhounds, racing greyhounds. Now they're walking them as pets. I can hardly go out the gate and those greyhounds going. Yeah. That's all good too. That's all part of the part of the whole uh, good news story and, and long may it continue. Absolutely. And I urge anybody that has a greyhound as a pet, um, you know, a, a rehomed greyhound, that when people stop you and ask you, and you usually get the same old questions and the same old sort of uh, stereotype sort of just say to them, no, no, this, this is a retired racer. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we raced him on the track and he absolutely loves it. And you can tell by him, he still misses it. And, you know, if we were watching the telly, he'd still trying to get through the television to get at the hair. You know, it, it's all perfectly natural. And these dogs are perfectly happy in the retirement. We have to spread the word. Let's get back to the action at Shelburne Park on Saturday night. Tommy, um, it's not that long ago we were throwing up all manner of superlative to describe the wonderful Susie Sapphire. She, of course, won the Puppy Oaks. She went on to win the Sporting Press Irish Oaks, the Boyle Sports Irish Greyhound Derby and the Bresbet Easter Cup. She really was a phenomenon, just a special, special Greyhound. And here we are thinking, ah, they'll, like poor old Peter and Owen, they'll never have another one like her. And up pops the Suncroft Festival Puppy Oaks Saturday night and let's go Bubbles. She's white and black. She's not the same colouring as Susie Sapphire, but this half-sister to the aforementioned superstar is very exciting indeed um it's worth pointing out like I, i've been guilty of myself over the last day or two saying well she's not exactly susie sapphire but it is worth pointing out that susie sapphire you know her runs to the puppy oaks were only very similar to let's go bubbles she took the next step for the irish oaks and who's to say let's go bubbles can't do that there's an awful lot to like about her she's a good starter she's good down the back and she's she's very strong um you know, she's named Bubbles because if you actually take off a racing jacket, she has these little bubble markings on her back, these black little spots. They look like bubbles. So that's why she's called Let's Go Bubbles. And for Peter Comerford and Owen McKenna, it was like just bringing back the old team, as they say, and a, a very good winner of the Suncroft Festival Puppy Oaks on Saturday night, Tommy. And one suspects we'll see plenty of these six finalists in the Oaks itself. She's a tiny bit older than, than Susie Sapphire was when she won 
so these half hours in November. Um, that's good. Bubbles is 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 is, uh, is uh, mid September twenty one, but like she's still extremely young. You love you loved a couple of things about her performance. The fact she's doing two oh six, two oh three in her last two runs. You loved also though, the fact that it was put up to her all the way the last day. Boyle Sports Coco. Uh, I think we you and I have the similar opinion of Boyle Sports Coco. She's developing into a bit of a star, and uh, when when she just strengthens up a little bit, she's going to be hard to peg back because her her, her early pace is ridiculously good. Um, but you know. It was really put up to 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 let's go bubbles and show not only has she the ability but she has the determination she has the drive and you know you do know what's going to happen with Owen McKenna you do know she's going to improve continue to improve she's going to step up she's going to step up considerably over time so I will be I will be interested to see how she develops as or, or how she gets on in the Oaks you can only assume that she's going to go there um, like it is a step it is a step up in class but I think she's going to be able to get she's going to be able to make that step whether she's Susie Sapphire it's probably too it's it's unfair to be to be kind of comparing her I suppose natural to do it but unfair unfair also because Susie Sapphire was able to lead to lead uh dogs in derbies and derby finals and the like so um there's a long way to go to get that far but it's a pretty good start five thousand to pick up along the way <laughs> Yeah, um, Susie Sapphire, when she won it, did a 202-2844. This lady does a 203-2847. I mean, you know, it's, it's not an awful lot of difference in this. Um, Susie Sapphire had one less race at this point in her career. You know, that that's how it's going to be going into the Oaks, that she'll have just one more race than Susie Sapphire did. And yeah, it's very un- it's unfair to compare her to her sister. Let's compare her to herself. Like, she's just a talented, talented tracker. Declan, she... Um, you know, she has all those qualities that Tommy mentioned, you know, early speed, strength and, and determination. She just seems to guess us. She, she's just a bitch that just seems to know what her, her job is. Yes. Uh, and she had to pass an exceptional one, I think, also in, in, in boys sports. Yeah, exciting as well. She is still progressing. She is, is, is still improving. And. Again, all, again, all six finals, good, easy, Razzle missed the kick. Unfortunately, there, there's talk of. Uh, Lima Rose charge traps badly, and she sit from a third, so ran, ran, ran well. You know, they're all good from at this stage, certainly. And the favorite easy razzle is a lot better than me, so it's just one of those all experience. And, and you know, if you let if Boy Sports Coco and Let's Go Bubbles are that's fair, hard task for, for a young girl, to, 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 she, she's not going to come behind those. Yeah, she's certainly not. And um, yeah, there, there was a there was an incident uh, sort of out of the boxes a few seconds before they opened that you, you could see the sort of the shoulders of, of three or four and they charged the boxes. Clearly, Easy Razzle was obviously affected on the outside. She she came out awkwardly and, you know, she was never at the races, but, it, it, you know, she did 28.55 and 28.53 in her previous two starts, which were her third and fourth career outings. So, you know, there's plenty of improvements still left in her. Johnny Lennon yeah. knows how to bring them from the Puppy Oaks into the Oaks itself, of course. He, he did it in the past um, highly successfully and uh, who's to say easy razzle won't go on to bigger things in the future no question about it the others we mentioned Boyle Sports Coco um, Rural KI um, KI once once further, no question about it. She no she left her chance of boxes the other evening as well. But she's very strong, Declan, and, and she's one that you could see sort of just developing into something that you know she could run very well over five fifty yards later in the year. But again, five seven five six hundred could be the making of her, and who knows, maybe even further. I think of the six finals, she, she'd be the one that should move up straight away. To be honest, yeah. you know, because five to five, she's going to be in a top level all, all the time, and she's going to keep missing the kick like that. It could disheart now. Yeah. Pretty, pretty soon, you know. But, the, only, uh, the, the only the only thing about a bitch like her missing the kick is that she does get the confidence of passing greyhounds because she'll be taking on early speedsters and over the five two five yard trip, those that don't lead will be probably easier passed by rural Kiai. And she has a good record. She's only been out of the frame, and that was the third time she'd been out of the frame in, in ten starts. But you know, she's three wins, three seconds. Um, she's very very strong, and she'll never. Well, she she shouldn't really be missing the kick as bad as she did the other evening. I I think I'd be very tempted to throw her into the Oaks because you'd be amazed how often a bitch like this would would get to the latter stage. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Certainly, wonder in in in, in the Oaks that is just coming up, and she will keep qualifying uh, uh, hopefully. But after that, trip pretty pretty quickly, I would think. You know. Yeah, let's get on to the um, 600. Um, again, Lima Rose and Cold Cash Ice or Gold Cash Ice. Keep Cold cash ice is the struggle. I struggle to accommodate in that one. I must say it's been cold cash and cold gash a few times. <laughs> let's let's gold cash, gold yeah. cash, right? Gold cash. Stick with that. Okay. Gold cash. I have it now. It's down. Right, going for it. 
She ran well in third. She does 28 78 in defeat. She's going the right way, Dick. She was step forward in the final. Definitely, that, 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 was, that was a good performance. And they're all very quickly uh, raced. They all been improved with age and experience, but she was one of the ones in the final that, that, that did. But, yeah. She's only in October 21, so no plenty of improvement left in her. Tommy, will get to the Open 600, the RPG TV-sponsored Open 600, mm-hmm. of course. It's one of the great competitions on the calendar. Just the 24, but there's plenty of quality on show. And, of course, the star of proceedings was Balnabula Ed. He was left in trap six in the forerunner mm-hmm. final. He, mm-hmm. It was the hottest heat by some margin. You take out Drupi's next one and Pablo Escobar. A bit disappointing. It was only a forerunner affair, but he still had Barefoot Supremo, Callaway Masters, and, and the hugely fast Clona Blue to take on and while he didn't win as easily as many would have expected I think it was a pretty satisfactory run I would have imagined he wasn't off his box all week um, having run at Limerick the previous week um, and when when he looked a little bit under pressure off the last bend, just kicked again. He wins two and a half lengths in, in 32-35. Three lengths, in fact, in 32-35 the, the fastest he's winner and honestly looked like he never moved out of third gear oh, no, I actually... Um, yeah, it's 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 like you're getting a bit of a surprise there at the, at the distance you won, and I, I, that's interesting because that's exactly how it felt to me when I was watching the race because I hadn't checked the result. I wanted to see the race, yeah. and um, I I Kelly Masters ran a superb race. It was running basically on his tail and looking for a gap all the way, and you could say definitely he, you know Kelly Masters maybe lost a length or so because he's 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 been held up slightly right not too much because because Balnabol Ed is doing is doing a, a serious gallop but um I thought watching the race all the way geez this could be close this could be close this could be close and then when they just turned into a straight your man just galloped away with his mask on him and the whole lot and galloped away up the straight to it to win as he wanted really he's like he's he's I love him and he's just such a rogue I think I like him it's a bit, a bit like Bob Slade dream to be quite honest about it there's a, there's a touch of a monkey about the, about the two of them but they just have such quality. When they have that class, like you just you can't you can't not enjoy watching greyhounds like that. Like and he's he's as fast as anything in the country. I have no doubt about it. And I can't say for certain that I think you win the competition. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. I tell you what, if you want to give me two to one, I'll, I'll back him with you. <laughs> he's in six again the next night. He looks likely to again get to the front early, and, and if doing so, well, we saw the other night that he stays, and he'll definitely go faster than thirty two, thirty five. Declan, um, there was a touch of. It was like watching. It was like watching a Group One horse in against Group Two horses. You know, you could sense he, he could just press the button at any time and go away. And that's probably what he did off the last bend, but didn't really look like he had overexerted himself, shall we say? So he certainly left plenty in the locker. I I thought he got a blinder actually. We're underestimating the Calorie Masters, who who is in hot form racing in Shelburne every into this in, in great form ran a blind the third bend was crucial ban and the boat cut him off and away from a very very good dog in, in the closing stages the clocks weren't great in Saturday night so 32 very very good I, I, I thought he ran superbly yeah I think he's around 4-6 to six now for outright success you know you can see well, why the other dog could be in 6 in the final the the the, uh, the best you know that, 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 that would make that one in, in, interesting you know but he is but I have agree with Tommy uh, uh, whether he's going to win it. It's that's Shin Skylella, but he, you know, definitely superb dog. And I, but I, I think you've been unfair. I thought he ran blind on Saturday. Yeah, he certainly did. Um, I, I'd like to mention in third, Barefoot Supremo. He's been lightly raced this year, but Paul has certainly kept the faith in him. I think Toaster is the plan for this fellow. Um, immensely strong. He ran very well at Toaster last year. I, I just wouldn't be writing him off completely. He's certainly a dog that could make the final, and he could, he could, you know, you know, if the three quick runs, let's say, if Balnebolet is there and a hot favourite, just might just, you know, the three mm-hmm. runs might just take the edge off him slightly. We'll see. Um, as I said, I, I don't believe he, he took too much out of himself the other evening. Uh, we'll go back to the opening heat deck, and you mentioned him there yourself. All for the best, the dog we've all mentioned here in the past, a hugely fast greyhound, a dog who had a, a career-threatening injury at one point, and it's great credit to John Codd that he's back, and he looked as good as ever the other evening, got loose into the opening corner, which is something that it doesn't often happen with all for the best, but over this longer trip against a field that wasn't blessed with early speed, he took charge early and you know, once doing so, forget about trying to pick him up. I thought McNeil ran a big, big race in defeat. He's a dog that caught my eye a couple of times earlier in the year. Um, he, he's a dog that 
may even stay further in time. And back in third was Global Glengar, who I thought around well. She's a sister or half sister to Bobsleigh Dream. Um, but all for the best was just different gravy. Six lengths a winner. Yes, I, I think 600 is, is his perfect, perfect, you know, and, and he, he, he was on his game. And, and once he let go into first band, that um, get game over, you know, and he's very, very consistent. Though. He, he's extremely consistent. He is right in the mix for the advice boys here, I would think so. And he is trapped six in the, in, in the semi final as well. Yeah. You know, Tommy, you're a big fan of all for the best. Oh, yeah. He, like he never looks like he's doing anything in a, in a, in a, in a big rush because he, because he, you don't, you don't get the sense that there's any acceleration anywhere, but he's just setting this ridiculous gallop that he seems to be able to keep going and going and going and going. He's, he's just a joy when he, when he breaks like he did the other day and gets a clear run. He's just a joy to watch. He's power packed. He's 20 wins, I think, on his card now. Like what a yeah. great greyhound he's been. Yeah, it's 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 massive record. Twenty wins from fifty five starts, six seconds and fifteen thirds. You know, like you need a bomb to keep him out of the frame. Um, of, of the remainder there, McNeil looks a real strong runner. Um, he he has a bit of age in his side. He sort of came to my attention a bit later later in his career. He has the nineteen starts now, but very strong. Yeah, not not a. Going the right direction, but like as you said, he has a bit of age on. But he's very, very inexperienced. Um, he's he's for for you know you're kind of unlucky a little bit. You're kind of unlucky a little bit in the sense that that you're coming up against all for the best because you're a dog. You're just not going to run down. You you wouldn't catch him on a motorbike when he's in front when he's in front going around the first bend in Shelburne Park. Like he's just he's just that powerful and he just just keeps galloping. But uh, this this is a good run for an inexper- a relatively inexperienced dog in that sort of company. And just come back to the all for the best for a moment. Like the twenty wins and and all these places, they're all in top company as well. These run against the top greyhounds most uh, most of the time in Shelburne Park, competing in 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 top top uh, races. He's just a joyous dog, joy a joy to have uh, the, the likes of him run on a regular basis. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, we'll move on to heat two. Declan, it was the it was the most thrilling heat of the lot. Um, Disco Pants and Stories Cash. It looked like Stories Cash was going to get the corner. Didn't quite. Disco Pants just got up his inside, and and then Stories Cash would lose his further ground. He making up ground into the third bend on Disco Pants, and you think these two are going to have a right ding dong up the home straight. And all of a sudden, Ballyhooley High comes up and goes hi. <laughs> Gets there on the line for Tom O'Neill, who of course won this competition in the past with Ballyhooley yeah. Henry and Ballyhooley High is a half brother to our old pal Beach Avenue who of course went so close in this competition a couple of years back Ballyhooley High good winner and uh, not the fastest heat time but certainly the way he did it a lot to like yeah I, I was a bit surprised to see him as, as an inside seat to be honest uh, was when he switched out in the end that 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 was a winning of it you know um, in fairness they did cut his other shows a, a little bit you know, all the way around. But that's not taken from the winner, you know, who's nicely placed there and third in the box seat all the way. And, and then when he had the switch, he did and, and won. No, it was a good performance, definitely. Yeah, very good performance. Uh, Tom O'Neill, Tommy, um, spit an image of his, of his brother, John Joe, um, equally as cute. Uh, he probably knew he had a, a decent one in Ballyhooley High and 600 yards looks his trip. About a minute later, he had a winner in in Curraheen Park. As um, I was stand down to, uh, just just in front of his wife Breed, actually just watched just before the race. Um, we weren't sure if we weren't sure if this one had got up. It was some performance. I know I know Declan's right to say that they could each other throw a bit and they went at fast pace and all that. But like he got slightly checked on the on the between the last two bends and then had to switch wide. I actually thought the fourth dog ran a cracking race as well. Kane touched the leg. That yeah. showed pace up and then kind of switched off, checked off at the first bend, lost a lot of momentum, a lot of ground. And was staying on powerfully again. Um, I don't know much about the dog. I'll be quite honest about it. It's a yeah, he, he, he caught the eye. He caught the eye in March just, 10th, the night he won in Shelburne. He came from absolutely miles off the pace and he, wins 11. He, he, he's a hugely fast greyhound. Probably just does lack that early. That's the problem. I, I just wonder, I just wonder, you'll you tell me on breeding and everything else. Is it, would, it, would it be a six bend dog? But looks, looks good attitude and, and, and real staying ability. Just, it just caught my eye. I don't know anything about it, to be honest about it. But um, put it in the notebook, all right. Okie dokie. Um, Stories Cash and Disco Pants can certainly play a part in the competition. They'll need to avoid each other in, you know, at the opening corner, unfortunately. Stories Cash out. I thought he could have got the corner. Just the Disco Pants dog just probably had that that fraction more early speed into the opening bend. And if they'd been reversed, I think Stories Cash would have won the race with Disco Pants and Ballyhooley High, probably second and third 
in in either order. But yeah, Story's cash out can certainly play a part, and he's he's more he's more than capable of going a few lengths faster uh, as. As sort of proven by his 3120 over the 575 the previous week, despite finding traffic, you know, with the clear passage. And, and that's going to be the key with a clear passage. He, he does have the pace. He's got a good draw in the semi final. He's in trap three with Toolmaker Wild and Global Glengar on his inside. Off a similar start to Saturday night, Stories Casio could easily lead those two on the inside. And if doing so, just just don't be surprised if he stepped up considerably on that 3297 that he posted. And then on to the third of the four heats. And we've already mentioned the last heat winner, of course, Balabu Led. So this is the last of the heats we're going to talk about. And this one went to oh big part. God, I can't even remember. Glengar Bride, she popped out of trap yeah. four, she cut for the inside, and once getting to the front, mm-hmm. she just kept on finding, kept on finding Tommy. Um, a nice display by a bitch who's only had the this was her fourth start. Plucky, very plucky performance because I thought, you know, when you see two maker wild behind, you think well, you're probably in trouble in Millridge Bryce there. And in fairness, there were like <laughs> there were about eight different times during the race, I thought. Uh, she's going to be passed now. She's going to be passed now. And she just never was. She just determined to get over to the rails. And uh, once she got there, she just, just, you know, like, let's, let's not, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't what you call impressive, but it was um really plucky. And for an inexperienced, but she's a sister to, um to our mystery, who might be the quickest uh, maiden in the country at the moment. He'll, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll shed that. He'll, yeah. He'll shed that status soon enough, but, um, uh, yeah, like and and uh, what we said about our mystery when when we saw him in in um, in Tralee was that he looked like a, a stayer. It's interesting that they went you know fairly quickly over six hundred yards with Glengar Bridie. She'll improve. She'll improve a good bit, but she 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 did obviously show a real determination to get across to the to the fence early, which is obviously you know this not was ideal. The, this this was the bitch that Pat Buckley um, debuted at Limerick to win by a distance in 28-41 and you know Pauline yeah. Pauline was left with the task of bringing her down that night and she said well what does this bitch have a chance he goes ah she's a life a small chance you know she won a distance she rings and she says I'm getting some dirty looks here Pat you're in trouble <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't happy with them uh, but Glengar Bridey a very good winner um, Declan a lot to like about her attitude Toolmaker Wild was second when we last saw him in the Easter Cup uh, for all for all for all that he, he qualified in second spot, it was a flat enough run. It, would, it suggested to me that he probably hadn't done an awful lot since the Easter Cup with him. Well, I wouldn't take away from the winner because Pat actually very inexperienced uh, runners in, in, in this competition and, and, and they've all covered themselves in glory. I mean, this this was a very good performance. Toolmaker Wild was, was right. Toolmaker Wild was was second and you don't do much work with Toolmaker Wild you, when you see him second he's generally going to win you know yeah. I mean, he's even making up ground on Sword Rex and he's the cup fan let, let's be honest for uh, 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 in a fourth race just a fourth race to hold up from halfway over a new trip well, was that's, that was an exceptional performance I, I thought was nearly in some ways uh, the one you take out of the night it was really really good for sure it's worth pointing out she did cut in from trap four. She's in four again the next night. And I, I mentioned stories. Cashew probably had in a bad draw. Well, all of a sudden he's got Glengar Bridie on his right hand shoulder, cutting in 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 the opening two or three yards. She did a five ninety three section the other night. You know that, that's that's racing. You know that's that's well up there. It is um, five ninety three. There'll be two good semi finals. I wonder will, will, will McNeil cut in and in, in, in the other one. Yeah, that's. At times, Saturday would tell, but the two favourites are perfectly drawn. That's that, yeah. that is for sure, you know. Yeah. Now yeah. that was a very good performance. Only her fourth race. No matter how she does in, in the rest of this, she she is absolute prospect. Yeah, um, we have to mention Bill Ridge Bryce, who who continues to run well and consistently. Um, he was just beaten into third spot behind Toolmaker Wild, ran well in defeat, and and again a dog that if he got if he got into a pitch, if he got into a first, second, or third sort of pitch into the back straight, he's going to be hard enough to knock out of it because he's he's very strong. He ran a cracker. He, he was beaten. Out. You know that, that that was a very very good performance. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we've two semi-finals to look forward to. Declan's alluded to it. The the two favourites will be in the striped jacket, all for the best. And Balnabola Ed. It's long odds on that both of them will be in the final. And Balnabola Ed, great draw in a race where there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of early speed. If he does, if he does break on terms, it's just very hard to see how we can be beaten again. He was one to three the other evening and he won you know, pretty comfortably in the end by three lengths. One would suggest to be a similar enough type price. Although 
if he did make any mistakes, it's not a field you'd like to be trying to make up ground on. Um, but at the same time, if he doesn't completely fluff his lines, you'd expect him to go around in front and all for the best on the outside with Glengar Bridie in four and Disco Bance in five. Both of them probably going li- to edge in slightly. You'd expect all for the best to get a nice run around on the outside. That was the action from Sheldon Park. Just one or two I just want to give a quick mention to on the undercard. Um, there was a thrilling finale. Um, did you see the photo finish for the finale, Declan? Uh, run faster was, and step in um, socks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd been calling and, that. You one. know, someone, someone. I mean, he was game. He was yeah. absolutely game to, to hang on there. Like that was the Fantastic. tightest photo finish I've ever seen. The screen. Like, it could have been that heat for sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, there was yeah. there was a couple of displays I want to mention. Uh, Trinity Junior took off. It was great to see. You know, a class animal just given a like. I mean, like a, a hair. A hair's drop in grade, and he just blows them away. 28-18. Declan, uh, we sort of suggested through the Easter Cup that I, I thought he was last started short of work. I, I think there was better to come from him, and I think Saturday's performance was evidence of that fact. In, on, on the night he was in it, I'm not saying it was an unpleasant night or anything, but the track wasn't running fast, and that, that for sure it was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, big, big run. Tommy, you, you like Trinity Junior, as do I. Um, just just the dog now, you wouldn't be ruling out of top prizes. Um, no, because he can because he can improve. Just needs to get a bit of consistency in the trapping. That's what he needs to do, which he hadn't had there for a while. Um, he has the early pace. He's 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 shown that he's shown on occasion that he has that early pace. We can just get out of traps. Nice to see him get a bit of a confidence boost around, get his head in front and win, win impressively, because I think we've seen you know, we've seen how good he is in it already and how good he can be, maybe. Yeah, no, no, no question about it. And then there's one other performance I want to mention, and that's of Crafty Orlando. He he took off in his previous start. Okay, Grant, it was only 2871, but it was so much more impressive to the eye. He showed tremendous early speed in that occasion. The other evening he was denied the lead by Foggy Bottom Declan, but he he really stuck in and he challenged off the last bend and then raced away from him. Just looks a really, really improving young Greyhound. Five wins now from eight starts and the remaining, you know, the rain, remaining starts he's finished second. So he, he gets it. I really like him. I really like him. Yeah. The, the, the week before, and he had to walk there because because a foggy bottom ran a cracker as well. Crafty landed, stuck with it, stuck with it, and 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 pulled away and won. It was a very good performance for the eight races. I mean, he is he is um, he he's quite exciting actually. Yeah, he's very exciting. Yeah, I, I, it, it, he reminds me of a certain greyhound in terms of his racing style and the fact that he's not doing massive clocks, but he's running very well. This time last year, something similar to Born Warrior. You know, just yeah. I know I know he is a long, long, long way to go to be He's a born warrior. Go, but well, there's something I, they're very sort of he reminds me of him. They want to win. Yeah. They want to win uh, yeah. They're gonna win it, you know. And and oh, sure, Ian. Yeah. Yeah. go Tommy. That's a good segue. That's a good segue because you said you said it reminds me of Born Warrior. And the greyhound I wanted to mention this so it was actually it was actually brought to my attention by Donna McLean. Uh last week when we were chatting in you all. He said Dog the one in, in I'm sure you've seen it, one in Clan Mel. Born and Mick, if you haven't seen it, have a look at that the last day. Third ever run. Have a look at the Declan when you get a chance. Have a look What's at that. I think that that looks... Born and Mick. Okay, well, Born and Mick, yes, sir. Yeah. Have a look at that run in Clonmel the last day. And tell me that doesn't remind you of of a, of a, a young Born, uh, Born and Warrior. 29.66 for the... Watch, just watch, even even watch, watch the racing. Just watch the, watch the way it races and everything. I, I did see that. Someone someone pointed me towards that. I did see it. God, I didn't cop the name, but I did see it. Yeah, hell of a run. Um, I get you. That, this is the time of year, lads, where they're coming out of the woodwork. Um, you know, while Borna Borna Warrior went on to win the went on to win the, or Born Warrior went on to win the Derby. Um, he wasn't really taking part in the big competitions this time last year. He was just running in these nice sort of races and winning a race here and there and you know, just looking the a really nice type hound. And it wasn't the juvenile classic or this or, or the Kirby form that sort of came to the fore as regards the Derby. Well, it was very much to the fore, but it wasn't the dog that had raced in either of them that came through to win it in, in Born Warrior. So it's well worth your while just keeping an eye around the country and seeing what's happening. And yeah, Born and Mick is perhaps one of those types of dogs that just continue to improve and take on the very best. Um, we'll move on to Waterford because on Saturday night, we had the semifinals of the select stakes and um, 
it was a couple of the big guns that that came into the competition that that made their mark. Um, again, quality sort of often rises to the top, the cream, as they say. And you know, we had two wonderful semi-finals, and it was the two dogs that hadn't taken part the previous week that came through. Clona Duke, who I think will learn plenty from his run the other evening. He really had to dig in bother on the opening corner, had to work for the lead, um, had to drive the third bend, just did everything right to win in 28-51, having trialed in 28-15. And the other heat went to Callaway Pro-Am, who looked looked every part that the dog that you know will be a, a derby contender again this year, beaten favourite, of course, in last year's decider. And he ran well to just get the better of Weekend Dream. Weekend Dream had led early. Um, Callaway Pro-Am challenged him on the third bend, went to the front between the last two bends and eased on to win by a length, but a, a big run. And again, the, the select stakes has torn us a, a final where we have Crypto Punk, uh, the other Colby, Callaway Pro, and We Can Dream, Clona Duke, and Kilgraney Sydney. Six very talented Greyhounds, Declan, and, and two wonderful performances on Saturday night in the semis. It's an incredible lineup. And I mean, all of those are, are, are Derby. Um, what I like about Clona Duke is she's getting a lot of experience. He's getting a lot of experience. At and, you know, he, he is exceptional. They all are. Um, I, I wouldn't like to pick the winner of that one. That's. Crypto Punk is, is is very consistent. He, he, he he's always there, you know. Well, so I, I wouldn't like to I wouldn't like to, to waste too much money on 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 that final, but it's really driven with quality. The draw, obviously, six inside seeds. It was always going to be of huge importance. But Crypto Punk, if anything, will will tend to move off a little bit. Either Kobe from two moves mm. in Callaway Pro go up straight from three. We'd imagine four week and dream will go up straight until a point where he has room to move across. If not, you'd imagine he'll continue to go up straight. I don't know what Clona Duke will do from five. Probably go up reasonably straight. He went up straight from trap four in the juvenile derby final, of course. And Kilgraney Sydney on the outside. Well, he's going to be the outsider of the field because he's seen very much as a trap one runner. Every night he's in trap one, he's he tend to made favour. You know, he won't be favoured on this occasion. But Tommy, a quality field, and you spoke about it earlier on, two wonderful semi-finals where it really was great on racing. And, and the emphasis on racing. If you want to see, you want to see what Greyhound racing should be about. Have a look at like that Callaway program and, and Weekend Dream race. That was just fabulous stuff. I mean that you know, I, I know it helps when you kind of know the Greyhounds. You know, kind of what you're what you're going to expect from it when when, when the race it's mid race or whatever. But I just thought that was a proper Greyhound race. I mean, I have been, um, like we we know we know we talked about uh, Weekend Dream before and how how how. Great at performance, it had to be by packet file to get him back to consistently running to the level he's running at now. And Callaway Pro am like the Derby finds with off favor in the Derby. And they're literally going toe for toe the whole way. Okay, there's a length in it at the end, but that's very, very little in the Greyhound race. I mean, Weekend Dream had the advantage early. Callaway Pro am could have given up at, at any number of points during the race, and he didn't. He drove and drove and drove. I thought, oh, I thought it was a it's as good a Greyhound race as you'll see for as I've seen for a long time. It's a competitive one. And then I look at the final and kind of go, I haven't a clue. If I had to guess now, if I had to kind of pick one right now, I would say Clona Duke. The reason being, it's plenty of early pace inside. Um, I'm not sure what slip around, but Clona Duke has shown, like you said about the juvenile uh, derby final, um, I think he's shown he can cope. And he, maybe he even copes a little bit better being, being somewhere three or four kind of middle. I know he's out in five, but I don't think Kilgraney Sydney's going to be an issue to him early. I think Weekend Dream will tend to go in a little bit. Callaway Prong will have to work really hard to get by the other Kobe and Crypto Punk early. Crypto Punk might even come off a little bit. Um, I think if I had to say the best of draw was Clone of Duke. That's the one I'd be siding with now. And I and I and I can't see how I could convince myself otherwise during the week if I spent the week trying to figure it out, if you know what I mean. I think it's I think I think it's difficult to say one will definitely escape inside words. I think Clone of Duke has the, the pace to kind of get a position at the first bend. And has this has the stamina to win it from there? Now we're talking about dogs that are a derby a derby favourite. So so if he gets in front of him, it's hard. It's going to be hard to pick up Callaway Pro Am. I just don't know where he'll do that with the other Kobe and Crypto Punk inside him, and we can dream on his outside. So it, I mean, Declan said it, it is fiendishly difficult, fiendishly difficult, fiendishly difficult, but also incredibly high in quality you know this is this yeah. is a contest where all six of them are are proven at the very highest level and i suppose that's why it's called the select stakes Declan. you know what i mean you know this is this fair isn't common, one, this, common, yeah. this yeah. isn't one yeah. called the, you know these are you know decent dogs in their night final if this is the select yeah. stakes final and, and that sort of that that it's there on paper 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would probably again if, if the very gun was put in my head, I would go to but my god, that's it's a race to say we're just enjoying oh, so, so, it. What, just sorry, enjoy. you broke up just as you were saying. What would you sorry, go with? I, on a juke, definitely. Yeah, but I yeah. say very little for a fiber max. It, it's a race to enjoy, really. Yeah, no, I, I think three of us will side with Clone a Duke, but I, I wouldn't mind the option of changing my bet after two strides if if something like a, a Callaway Pro I'm fl- flashed out or the other Kobe flashed across Crypto Punk. Yeah, it's yeah, really, yeah. really, really high quality fare. Gentlemen, it's been a good weekend of Greyhound Sport, and of course, much better to come in, in the coming weeks and months. We have the Derby now to look forward to. But before then, we have so much top class racing. The final of the Select Stakes, the 600. We have the Corn Cullen. We'll have the Oaks, uh, Produce Stakes, Race of Champions, you name it. It's all coming up. Dundalk International. Um, of course, you know, there'll be interesting contests like the, the Shelburne Champion 550, which has been a great sort of adver- ad- advertisement for, for what's going to happen in the coming months after. Um, something like Clambrine Treaty could well end up there. I, I wonder. I, I don't know. Maybe they'll go down the Produce Stakes route, of course. They did win the Produce Stakes um, with Clambrine Hero, the, the same sets of connections. So it'd be interesting to see if he goes to the Produce Stakes but all in all there's lots to look forward to it's going to be a, a pretty cracking year given the quality on show in both the unraced stakes and of course the Kirby Memorial and um, there's another unraced stake or two that we'll be keeping an eye on future champion from lip from Enniscorthy of course the uh, the champion unraced is starting very shortly in Kilkenny and I'm sure there'll be a few stars lined up for that but lots lots to look forward to gentlemen for sure yeah very exciting time of year very exciting and Tommy Big big crop of greyhounds around at the moment. Well, that's the beauty of it. These are these all sta- these stakes are all filling with 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 top class greyhounds because we have that many at the moment. It's what I talked about earlier on, talking about the Kirby final and and looking ahead to the Derby and just thinking the the number of top class greyhounds we have. And the beauty is mentioning the likes of your born and Mick, and I'm sure there's for every for for me mentioning one greyhound that was brought to my attention. There's probably people will be be replying to this or, 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 or send new emails saying what about this 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 and this like and, and sure. probably rightly so and maybe there's the derby winner amongst them that we haven't mentioned here that's it's, a good it's, quality it's actually, that's it's, a, actually, it's actually hard to keep on top of it like, get dogs pop up every now and again you just like you could just look into a random ordinary card from somewhere and you see a dog doing an unbelievable run and all of a sudden you hear oh that dog was sold for forty thousand across to the water or or he's he's now been targeted mm-hmm. such and such and a dog can come from nowhere in, in, in a matter of days and be stuck in sixth favourite to win the derby. You know, it can happen. I have a, I have a, I have a pub making, de- making a debut tonight, so not a derby dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it'll be an A9 derby. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it was it was a good, good one this morning. Lots to talk about. Lots to look forward to. And again, uh, we're reflecting on a wonderful, wonderful Kirby Memorial champion in Clonbrian uh, Treaty. Um, we never mentioned, you know, a Clonbrian Treaty, a, a dog who won the, the big race in the Treaty County, uh, very much a Limerick runner as far as his ownership is concerned. Um, but, you know, Graham Holland will be claiming him for his golden-based operation. I suppose he's done a little bit to make that happen. Um, I look forward to seeing where he turns up next. The same could be said for each of the six finalists in the Con and Annie Kirby Memorial, which was a very special event once again this year. That's it, though, from us on Talking Dogs on Monday. Again, my thanks to Techno Dunahoo and the exiled dub Tommy Lyons. We'll see you next week. And maybe on Tuesday, of course, Monday's a bank holiday. And, uh, you know... They, they just can't afford to pay me on a bank holiday Monday. Uh, but that's it for this week. Good luck. True. Good evening. God bless. <laughs>